AP Calculus BC, Unit 5, Day 3, Office Hours. These are the even answers. Um, I think I might have had one mistake, um, maybe on the online version. It should be an X, not a 1, which makes a big difference in how you did it. So there should be an X plus there. So these are the even problems. Pause it if you need to and check these. Uh, it's in the back of your book. Okay. So let's try these out. Now, number eight was the first one. I'm going to go ahead and do it the wrong way first because I suspect some of you guys may have done the same thing. So just to illustrate how you could easily do the wrong thing. Now, here's the deal. Here's the mistake people made. Um, you thought maybe I can do partial fractions. You're like, oh, x plus 3, x minus 3. But the problem is the degree at the top and the bottom aren't equal. So you actually need to do long division first, and it changes your answer. I'll show you what you get if you did partial fractions right away. And it'll seem like everything's going well. Um, so you multiply through by the least common denominator. Maybe get rid of the b's first. I get square that's 9 minus 6 is 3 equals negative 6a. a equals negative 1 half. b. Put a 3 in everywhere. 9 equals 6b. b equals positive. And let's see. No, 9 minus 6 is 3. b equals positive 1 half. So we would rewrite it as negative 1 half dx over x plus 3 plus 1 half dx over x minus 3. So we get negative 1 half, natural log of the absolute value of x plus 3, plus 1 half, natural log of the absolute value of x minus 3, plus c should show up on this step. Now, they both have 1 half, so I'm going to just put a 1 half in front. And this should end up at the top. x minus 3 and x plus 3 should be on the bottom because there's a negative in front of it. So that's what maybe some of you got. Um, we could also rewrite it like... that should definitely combine logs. Here's the deal. That is wrong. Because, I mean, it seems like everything went fine, but it is wrong. It's really close to the right answer, but the method is not right. So whenever the degree at the top is greater than or equal to the bottom, you need to do long division. So we should be doing long division, okay? So the way we do that is we do, okay, uh, x squared plus 0x minus 6, x squared plus 0x minus 9, divide, divide, that's a 1. So you get x squared plus 0x minus 9, you're going to subtract, and we get 3 as the remainder. So we're going to rewrite this as 1 plus 3 over x squared minus 9. Um, now at this point, we do need to do long. We do need to do partial fractions. But now it's okay because the degree, is, the numerator is smaller than the degree denominator. So we do need to do partial fractions. And so we would get uh, a over x plus 3 plus b over x minus 3. Multiply through by least common denominator. 3 equals a x minus 3 plus b x plus 3. Plug a negative 3 in. Get 3 equals negative 6a. a equals negative 1 half. Uh, plug a positive 3 in. 3 equals 6b, 
b equals positive one half. I mean, they look the same, right? So it's gonna be one dx minus one half dx over x plus three plus one half dx over x minus three. And so then we get x minus one half natural log of the absolute value of x plus three plus one half natural log of the value uh, absolute value of x minus three plus c. We could combine these two together plus one half natural log of absolute value of x minus three would be on top, x plus three would be on the bottom. That's the right answer. Now it's almost identical to this, right? Except for the extra x in front. But that's correct. Other one is different, other one's wrong. So just something to watch out for. Uh, nine. Uh, might just have some oldies thrown in here. Two inverse tangent of x plus c. Done. Ten. Three dx over x squared plus nine. Um, this one, u substitution doesn't work, but that's that's inverse tangent. We need to take a nine out, and we could bring three out to it at the same time. And so that's going to be x squared over 9 plus 1. So that's going to be x over 3 squared. And so we will get, uh, we could say, well, u equals x over 3. So du equals 1 third dx. I don't want the 1 third, so I can put the, get rid of it. So we, we have a 1 third. Then we get another 3 out front. It's d over u squared plus 1. So that's inverse tangent of u plus c. We write it back in terms of original variable. Inverse tangent of x over 3 plus c. So just a little review problems there first. 11 is the integral of 7dx over 2x squared minus 5x minus 3, and uh, we can't solve that. So when we try to factor it, 2x, x, you gotta get minus 5. So if you put the minus 3 here, no, minus 3 here, you give you negative 6, plus 1x gives you negative 5. So we're gonna do a over 2x plus 1, plus b over x minus 3. And we need to break those up. So I multiply 3 by the least common denominator. We get 7 equals a x minus 3 plus b 2x plus 1. Plug negative 1 half in. And we get 7 equals negative 7 halves a. Multiply by negative two sevenths, and a equals negative two. Plug a three in. Seven equals seven b. B equals one. Um. So we're ready to go. Equals negative two. Integral dx over two x plus one plus one dx over x minus 3. So this is going to be negative 2, natural log of the absolute value of 2x plus 1, but an extra 2 is going to pop out, so we've got to divide by 2, plus natural log of the absolute value of x minus 3, plus c. So we should combine these together and say natural log. So it's going to be natural log of x minus 3 on top over 2x plus 1 on the bottom, because there's a minus right here, plus c. And that's the answer that's in the back of the book, too. Those are the kinds of answers I want you to get. All right, 13 
is 8x minus 7 over 2x squared minus x minus 3 dx. So we need to try and factor this. Uh, minus 3 plus 1 will give you negative 1x in the middle. So you a over 2x minus 3 plus b over x plus 1 dx. Let's show that work. Okay, multiply 3 by the least common denominator. You get 8x minus 7 equals a x plus 1 plus b 2x minus 3. So we can plug a negative 3 halves in. It's kind of ugly. Negative 3 halves. So that would be negative 12, negative 19 equals negative uh, 1 half a. So a equals 38. Something's wrong. It just seems like a crazy number. Um, what did we do wrong here? Plug your positive three halves. Positive, positive. So that's going to be uh, 12 minus 7 is 5. And that's going to be three halves plus 1 is going to be 5 halves. So you multiply by 2 fifths and you get 2. If we plug a negative 1 into everything, you get uh, negative 15 equals, that goes away. Negative 5b, b equals 3. So now we're going to integrate. Uh, I put the 2 out front. dx over 2x minus 3 plus 3. dx over x plus 1. 2 natural log of the absolute value of 2x minus 3, but an extra 2 is going to pop out chain rule. It's 3, natural log of the absolute value of x plus 1, plus c. Combine these together into natural log of 2x plus 3, or 2x minus 3. Times uh, x plus 1 cubed. And we can do that. Feel like I made another mistake. Uh, let's see. No, let's see thirteen. No, I think that's right. That was good. Okay. Um. All right. Fourteen five x plus fourteen over x squared plus seven x dx equals a over factor this x x plus seven x plus b over x plus seven dx. So multiply through by these common denominator. Plug a zero into everything. So it's going to be 14 equals 7a. a equals 2. And we plug negative 7 into everything. It's going to be negative, negative 35. Negative 21 equals negative 7b. b equals 3. Okay, so we rewrite it. Um, 2. Integral of dx over x plus 3. Integral of dx over x plus 7. 2. Natural log of the absolute value of x plus 3. Natural log of the absolute value of x plus 7. Plus c. So, I mean, this is an answer, but uh, probably have to combine it. So, if we to combine it, the natural log of x squared can get rid of the absolute values because it's squared. Uh, times absolute value of x plus 7 to the third power. Can't get rid of those ones. Plus c. So, something like that.
Okay. Um, okay. Some more. So we are on to problem 15. 15 dy dx. So these are the differential equations. 2x minus 6 over x squared minus 2x. So we need to separate the variables, but this time it's actually, I mean, we can just integrate right away because there is no y terms. I mean, that's fine. I mean, you kind of do want to move the dx to the right. Um, so that's going to be a over x and b over x minus 2. Multiply through by the least common denominator. Uh, plug 0 and everything. Negative 6 equals negative 2. A. A equals 3. Plug 2 and everything. Negative 2 equals 2, uh, 2 B. So B equals negative 1. Um, so get y equals uh, 3 dx over x minus 1 dx over x minus 2. So y equals 3 natural log of the absolute value of x minus natural log of the absolute value of x minus 2 plus c. So and that's an answer, but uh, let's see if we can write a little more compact one. x cubed over x minus 2. And we want to make sure it comes out positive, the whole thing, right? So I think we just put it around the whole thing, plus c. Okay, 16 is dy dx equals 2 over x squared minus 1. So I promised uh, different equations, but these ones are kind of simple because there's almost no uh, variables to separate. So to do this, um, it's not going to be uh, it's not going to be u. Okay, that's not going to work. It's not going to be inverse tangent because inverse tangent is plus. So I guess it's got to be partial fractions. So we factor it. Multiply 3 by the least common denominator, we get 2 equals ax minus 1 plus bx plus 1. Plug on negative 1 in, 2 equals negative 2a. So a equals negative 1. Uh, you plug a positive 1 in everywhere, you get 2 equals 2b. And b, all of b equals 1. So now we're going to rewrite it, break it up. It's going to be negative dx over x plus 1 plus dx over x minus 1. So this going to be negative natural log of the absolute value of x plus 1 plus natural log of the absolute value of x minus 1 plus c. So that's an answer, but let's combine the logs. Log of x minus 1 over x plus 1. There we go. Much more compact. Okay, 18, uh, f prime of x equals 2 over x cubed minus x. So, I mean, we could think of this as df dx as a derivative. So we separate the variables. So we have df equals 
2 over x cubed minus x dx. And then the integrable size. Can't do anything here, so I think we have to rely on partial fractions. Now, there could be more than two. There could be three or however many. This one's got a three. So this is kind of unique. Um, so this is going to be uh, a over x plus b over x plus 1 plus c over x minus 1. So we, we just got to do 3. Let's see what happens. Multiply 3 by these common denominator. You get 2 equals a x plus 1 x minus 1 plus b times x times x minus 1 plus c times x times x plus 1. So um, if we plug 0 in, that gets rid of a couple terms. The 2 equals negative uh, a, so a equals negative 2. Um, then we could plug in 1. And that would get rid of both of these guys. And we would have 2 equals 1 times 2 is 2c. So c equals 1. And then you could plug in negative 1 everywhere. I would make this term go away and that term go away. The 2 equals, if you put a negative 1 in here, it's negative 2, so it's negative 1, it's positive 2b. b equals 1. So that's how you do it. If there's three factors. Um, this is 17, by the way. So if we integrate both sides, we get uh, f equals, uh, I guess we could write this, uh, df equals negative 2 dx over x plus 1 dx over x plus 1 plus 1 dx over x minus 1. So it's going to be f equals negative 2 natural log of the absolute value of x plus natural log of the absolute value of x plus 1 plus natural log of the absolute value of x minus 1. So I think we could combine all of these together. Um, so natural log of, bring this in. So x plus 1, x minus 1. On the bottom, x squared plus c. We could... So, I mean, uh, that can be an answer. Um, we don't need absolute values around the x because it's getting squared the way we wrote it. So, um, we could distribute this back x squared minus 1 over x squared. The absolute values are on the top still. Okay, 18. G prime of t equals 2t cubed over t cubed minus t. So what you need to notice is that we need to do long division. Okay, you got to do long division. Do we the top and bottom the same? So I'm going to try that out. We have uh, 2t cubed plus 0t squared plus 0t plus 0. We have about t cubed plus 0t squared minus t plus 0. First term is divided. We get a 2. Distribute, distribute, distribute. 2t cubed plus 0t squared minus 2t plus 0. Cancel, cancel, positive 2, t is the remainder. Um, okay. So now if we rewrite it, there's a 2 plus 2t two over t cubed minus t. Now, I think we're going to do um, partial fractions. 
Now, what we could do is cancel one of these T's out. I'd just make things a little easier. So, um, <clears throat> if you do that, then you need to use this denominator of this one. So that's gonna be um, <clears throat> two, two equals, I never wrote down. Okay, so two equals a t minus one plus b t plus one. So if I plug negative one in, I get two equals negative two a, a equals negative one. Plug positive one in, I get two equals two b, b equals positive one. So then I could rewrite this. Now we have the two, we integrate that on its own. Now we have a minus uh, d t over t plus one plus one d t over t minus one. So it's gonna be two t minus natural log of the absolute value of t plus one plus natural log of the absolute value of t minus one plus c is an answer, but Let's combine these natural logs. That's the natural log of t minus one over t plus one. Absolute values. All right. Um, I guess I should put a plus here because I made that the top and not the bottom because the minus so I should have a plus. It. Okay. Last couple, 19 says, find the goal without using the technique, without using the technique of partial fraction. Don't do partial fractions. It might work. Don't do it. It probably means there's an easier way, like good old U substitution, right? So that's du over u, which is natural log of the absolute value of u plus c, which is absolute value natural log of x squared minus four plus c. So good old fashioned substitution. Four x minus three over two x squared minus three x plus one. So let's try you substitution first. Two x squared minus three x plus one, and then du would equal four x minus three dx. Perfect. So this is going to be du over u, which is natural log of the absolute value of u, which is natural log of the absolute value of two x squared minus three x plus one plus C, of course. <laughs> Absolute values have to stay. And that is it.